I say, I remember when you were really small, and, uh, and I'm not even that old yet, but I just feel old when I have to say those words. But it's a blessing to see uh, Melinda married and, and her family growing. It's a special day for uh, my self, myself as well on June 5th because it's my son's birthday. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if, if you don't know Austin. Austin, please stand up and come on, stand up. Mijo, mijo, stand. Amen. Fifteen years old today. Amen. And uh, he he came into this world, changed our life. It was our first baby, and uh, fifteen years ago. And so it is quinceanero. Fifteen. And we are so proud of him, so proud of him today. And, and so today we're able to present Hendrix Lunap. One of the things that I think is better are part of this great presentation is that both of you have been coming. Can we give him applause for that? For Nowadays, it's hard to get people to come to church. And, uh, you know, just we thank God for your faithfulness, for your coming. I know this is new to you. And, you know, for a time, I remember the first time he came to church and people were running around, chairs flying all over the place. And, and he was like, what is going on? And, you know, it's, 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 it's a, a mighty river that overtakes us. It's the spirit of the Lord. And you. Just like when you get into a river and it is flowing and it is moving, you cannot contain it. And you go with the river. And that's how when we get into these moments of worship and the presence of the Lord comes and, and, and people are crying and their hands are raised and, and they're, you know, just um, dancing and exuberant. It's because they are being overtaken by the power of God. And, and I want to read a, a portion of scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 27. And this is Hannah. She says, for this child, I prayed. I prayed for Hendrix Lunap. And the Lord has given and answered my requests, which I have asked him. And therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. Today, what we're doing is we're just telling the Lord, he belongs to you. And we're just going to be a good steward of watching what belongs to you already. Amen. Because our kids don't fully belong to us God with his grace and mercy extends time in a period of time so that we can love upon his children and it's called parenting and so uh, God has given you this privilege to parent Hendrix Lunap and as long as he liveth he shall be lent to the Lord and and today we want to just present Hendrix to the Lord to his house and as he grows up, he will know every outlet, every where the water bottles are, because he's going to be a servant in the kingdom of God, just like his grandpa and grandma. Amen. Directing traffic, welcoming people, five years old, already in the visitor center, you know, signing people up for life groups. A singer like mom. Amen. Melinda's a great singer. Amen. And, uh, and we're dedicating him back to the Lord where he belongs. This is his roots. Don't, don't ever, the Bible says, what profit the man if he gains the whole world? Gain degrees, gains lots of money, but loseth his soul. And we're, we're living in a society that's more important with success than they are eternity in God. Always teach your children, especially Hendrix, who's going to play the guitar. <laughs> Hendrix. Uh, where he comes from and teach him yes mama and daddy get crazy in the Lord these are his roots he is Pentecostal the first Pentecostals they thought they were drunk in Acts chapter 2 and Peter had to um, come and tell him you are, we are not drunk as you suppose we are filled with the, what, was prof, what was spoken of the prophet Joel the Spirit of the Lord. And so today, what an honor it is to present 
Hendrix looting up. I'm going to invite everyone, if you could please stand. And we're going to pray for this amazing child. A gift from the Lord. And another soldier for the kingdom of God. And today as you stand here at this altar, you realize that you are now going to be joint partners with God in raising Hendrix in the fear of the Lord, in the ways of the Lord. And, and we thank you and commend you for doing that. We love you both, Tommy, Melinda, amen. She is so awesome. She always comes to give me a hug at the end of the service. And, and Hendrix, Lou Knopf, we present you in the name of the Lord. I want to invite everybody to just extend your hand. We're going to pray for Hendrix in the name of Jesus. You already looked. All right. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for Hendrix. Not we pray that you watch over him, you keep him. God, I pray that he would just do a double portion of 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 service to the Lord, like his grandparents Richard and Eva, his grand his great grandparents Richard. God and Mary Lou Mendes that he would be a powerful man of God that would love the kingdom of God and that he would be raised in the fear of the Lord right now we speak a blessing upon his life upon his health God that he would be the smartest in his class that he would sleep throughout the night that he would be the healthiest young man in the name of Jesus every attribute and blessings God that you have already given him will be cultivated from his parents and from this church and we just thank you right now in Jesus name amen amen grab these babies amen he was just standing so still like come get me and so I had to grab him amen Father, raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Tommy and we thank you for Melinda. We thank you for they are mighty people of God. I thank you for the seed of the gospel that's already been placed in Tommy's heart. And you're going to finish the work that has already been started. And I thank you because he's already a man of God. It's already been spoken upon his life. And he hasn't entered into it yet, but he will see it and it will be fulfilled right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the woman of God and the great things that you are going to do through her in Jesus name in Jesus name amen can you just say a blessing over um, Hendrix Knopf right now raise your hand and just bless him in the name of Jesus in your word we speak blessing over his health over his walk with the Lord he'll be the smartest in his class in the name of Jesus in Jesus name amen all right remain standing we're gonna pick our tithes and offerings how many glad how many brought an offering to give to the Lord Amen. And two, we're going to pick our tithes and offerings. Just follow the directions of our ushers, and then we're going to get into um, the word of the Lord. We want to thank everybody that volunteered in our bone marrow drive and um, to find a match. We want to thank Sister Alvira and her great staff that was here um, yesterday and tomorrow. In Jesus' name, let's follow the directions of the ushers, and let's everybody clap your hands and let's shout with the voice of triumph. Yeah. Every praise is unto the Lord. Amen. With one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. With one hour, every place, every place is to God. Oh, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, honor and power belong to God.
shout with one eye. Oh, sing. Lift your voice. Every prayer. Oh, come on and sing. Hallelujah. It's to our God. Glory. Hallelujah. It's to our God. Every prayer. It's to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every hand raised, is to our God. That's why we sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah, it's to our God, every praise. Somebody clap your hands and shout with the voice of triumph. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Welcome everybody once again to our 1 p.m. worship service. So glad to have you. We hope to see you next Sunday. We're going to have a great time this week. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance. Everybody say endurance. The race that is set before us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I will finish this race. Come on, prophesy over yourself. Turn to somebody else and say, I will finish this race. Amen. You may be seated. Charles Spurgeon once said, by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. By perseverance, the snail reached the ark. It's not how we start, but it's how we finish. Amen. Some of us in our journey, in our walk with God, at this point and in this season of your life, you might not have the strength and the energy like you used to have when you first came to the Lord, but at least you're still here. Amen. Maybe you can run 10 laps, or you could have run 10 laps when you first got converted, and now you could just barely get to your chair from the car. But guess what? You're still in the house of the Lord. 
And it doesn't matter what season and what journey you are in your walk with the Lord. The most important thing is that you have to finish this race. Turn to your neighbor and say, I had to finish what I started. Amen. The coaching staff of a high school cross-country running team got together for dinner after winning the second state championship in two years. One of the coach tells the main coach, I don't get it. And the main coach says to the assistant coach, explain, tell me more. What, what don't you get? He said, why are we so successful? We went from the top 20 high schools in our sports program to the top of the athletic program. We don't work harder than other teams. We don't come in more days than other teams. What we do is just so simple. And the main coach looks at him and he says, I will give you the secret of why we're so successful. He said, it's because we run best at the end. No, oh, somebody. Come on. We don't just give up halfway. We press through until we get to the finish line. And I've come to tell AJC, I don't care what attack you've been going through. I don't care what season of life you're in. I've come to tell you, we are in the best moments of our life. And we are running the best like we've ever got. Because we're still in the race. You haven't given up. You haven't got down to the sidelines. If you got to leap, you leap all the way to the finish line. But at least you finish what you started. Amen. The main coach then tells the assistant coach, I tell the runners to remember one thing. And that is, if you're hurting and if you're feeling pain, look to your left and look to your right. Because the same competitors must hurt the same or a whole lot worse. And so if you are hurting and in pain, you need to keep on pressing through. Because it's the one that, come on somebody, it's the one that presses through the pain that's going to endure the race. And I want to remind somebody here this afternoon, you might be struggling, you might be having attacks of the devil, but remind yourself, the devil is just as tired trying to kill you as you are tired trying and endure I wish I had somebody for 30 seconds I dare you to out shout the devil I dare you to outrun the devil I dare you to tell the devil is that all you got cause I still got more because the joy of the Lord is my strength Oh, it's going to get crazy in this house because somebody in this house is willing to 